Hello everyone, uh, today we're going to be learning arrays uh, and this is a C++ tutorial. So what are arrays? Arrays can contain multiple values inside of them. So let's say uh, int g that we, uh, we learned before equals 5. So this is a variable that can only contain single value, right? g only contains 5 in this case. But uh, we can use arrays to contain multiple integers. So um, how do, how do we do this? We first write ng, open square brackets, um, close it, and inside of the square brackets we put how many variables do we want to contain. Let's say we put 4 here, that means now g will have 4 integers, and we can make them equal to, uh, open the square brackets and close it, and you need a semicolon this time. I know when uh, we have functions, we don't need semicolon at the end, but when we create arrays, we do. We do need this at the end. Okay, so now four, we can write first integer to be three, and then two, nine, and zero. Okay, so now we create a G that has all of these four elements, or all of these four integers inside. Right. Now, how can we access these? Let's say I want to print two. How can I do it? Uh, so you do C out G of one. Now you might be wondering. So okay, first element in G is probably three, right? Now if I'm gonna run, you might be thinking it's going to print number three. Uh, but no, uh, it printed two. Why? Because computers actually count in a different way than humans. Like for example, we count one, two, three, four, right? This is one, two, three, four. Computers count starting from zero. So for computer, three is a zeroth term. Run it, it prints three. Okay, so for a computer, this is zeroth element, first element, second element, and third element, okay? Now, let's say you want to uh, print out all four of these values, or actually, let's say we have seven of them, right? Uh, and here it keeps on going, five, three, two, and you want to see C out, let's say, right? Who wants to write C out uh, G1, right? And then C out G2, and so on and on seven times, right? No one wants to write it. So we can use actually a for loop to make it faster. We can say, okay, so wait, it contains, yeah, it contains seven values, okay. So we can write for int i equals zero because it's uh, arrays start from zero till i is less than seven, i is less than seven because the last uh, element is a sixth term, right? Because it's not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, and 6. So the last element is actually a 6th term, not 7th term. That's why we put less than 7 in i++. So this for loop will, will uh, loop through 0 to 6. 0 to 6, this is 0, this is 6, and it's going to have all the values in between. Now, c of g of i. End line and let's print it okay so as we see here it started with 3 right because i is 0 at first and g of 0 is 3 then i plus plus right so it added one value now i is 1 g of i g of 1 is 2 now i became um, 2 g of 2 is 9, g of 3 is 0, g of 4 is 5, uh, g of 5 is 3, and g of 6 is 2. So now with for loop, so with arrays, we created 7 elements, and with for loop, we looped through all 7 of them, um, and we put all of them out, okay? That's why arrays are, and for loops are so handy in programming. You don't have to write seven different lines. You don't have to create in integer A is three, integer B is two, integer C is nine. No, no, no. We can just create one array that contains all seven and then tell the loop to print all seven, okay? We don't have to write C out, G of zero, G of one, G of two, so on.